I remember I was sitting behind my desk. Suddenly, they raided the office carrying rifles. They raided like they were in a battlefield. They started shouting and they said, nobody move, stay where you are. Then we understood that they were the Air Force Intelligence. I was shocked, I didn't want to believe. I didn't expect that I will be later detained and tortured and I'll spend almost a year underground. Down there in that place, it's dark, it's crowded. You are not allowed to speak at all. If the jailer hear anything, they come down and banish us and ask for arbitrary five people to go out and they start beating them. They hold electricity tasers and that was daily electric shocks we were subject to. We don't know if we are going to survive or no. They could do anything to you because nobody knows that you are here. Your family, your lawyers, nobody has access to you and the government is denying you. So we decided to start documenting the phone numbers and the names in case one of this group is released, he can contact the family. We already have these shirt pieces that we could use for writing, but we needed some kind of ink. One of our group, he said, I have an idea. He asked for a plastic bag and he went to the bathroom area and came back carrying the plastic bag with something red in it. He told us that he squeezed his gum and spit the blood inside this. We thought that it would fade later with time. So we mixed some rust with the blood and that's how we got the perfect ink. We used a chicken bone as a quill, dip it in that liquid and write with it. The names on the fabric, on the piece of shirts, were written by the hand of a journalist. His name was Nabil Shorbaji. We knew that he died later after two years and I never wanted to hear that news. We arrived to the point that we should smuggle them but we don't know how. One of our group, he was a tailor, he just plucked some threads and he inserted those shirt pieces in the cuffs and collars of a shirt. And we agreed that the first one who will be called out will wear this shirt and go out. Maybe a month passed by and my name was called. I jumped to the shirt and wore it. One of them said to me, please don't forget us. They had this hope that when I go out, I could help them. And I've been working on that, trying to convince people, organizations, governments, to do anything for them. There are millions of Syrians that now need justice. The value of these shirt pieces, I hope that it plays a part in holding some people accountable.